to Tales Beyond the Green. Welcome back to another video. And we're down here today. We're in Whitechapel, and we're going to take you back to 1888 and the time of Jack the Ripper's murders. And what we're going to do today is going to film the locations where the murders happened, and we're going to do it picture by picture, how it used to look and how it looks now. So I'm going to take you on a tour of Jack the Ripper's murders. So this is Durwood Street, and it used to be called Bucks Row and the, the residents of Bucks Row uh, what its name changing um, uh, because it was associated with the murder. And the first one I'm going to take you to is Mary Ann Nichols, and she was but murdered just over here by the station. We can actually find the actual spot where she was murdered, so I'm going to take you over to it now. So Mary Ann Nichols was discovered at 3.40 a.m. on Friday the 31st of August 1888 in Bucks Row. Her throat had been severed by two deep cuts one of which severed all the tissues down to the vertebra. Her private parts had been stabbed twice and the lower part of her abdomen were partly ripped open causing her bowels to protrude. And she was, her body was found just where you can see um, the rubbish just scattered there at the side of Whitechapel Station. So this shot you can see here was from the actual murder scene. I'll put it on now. So if you think Jack the Ripper would have murdered, um, murdered her there, he'd have either, either run up that way or he'd have made his way back down Bucks Row to that way but at some point here he would have uh, made his way away from the murder scene of uh, Mary Ann Nichols. So that was victim number one so I'm going to take you now on to the next one. And the victim number two was a girl called Annie Chapman and I'm just going to take you over and find a spot where she was murdered and I'll see you over there. So here we are, number, um, victim number two, Annie Chapman, discovered on the 8th of September 1888, approximately at 6am in the morning, near the steps of the doorway of number 29, Ambrose Street. Again, two deep cuts to her throat, her abdomen had been entirely cut open with a section of flesh from her stomach being placed on her left shoulder. Uh, another section of skin and flesh, plus a small intestines, being removed and placed over her right shoulder. And then um, with this one, her uterus and bladder and a lady parts had been removed. So he really went to town, Jack the Ripper, on Annie Chapman. He must have had time um, without being disturbed. So, but this is the actual spot number 29 Hanbury Street where the brutal murder of Annie Chapman would have took place. So this is inside number 29 Hanbury Street and this would have been the courtyard where Annie Chapman's mutilated body was found. It's now a market but um, as I say it would, would have been a courtyard at one time. Uh, full of houses and um, like I say Annie was found mutilated. So Jack the Ripper strikes again, number two, and he would have either come down Amber Street that way, or maybe run away down Amber Street that way. But as I say, just behind me, number 29, Annie Chapman become the second victim of Jack the Ripper. So just behind me is the um, scene of murder number three of Elizabeth Stride. And this was also known as the double event, as he killed two within 45 minutes of each other. So I'm gonna turn you around and I'll tell you a bit of uh, what he did to Elizabeth. So where you can see the gates there, um, a horse and cart was coming through um, the corner of the, the yard, into the yard, and it, the horse um, sort of like was spooked by what he saw on the floor, it saw the body of uh, Elizabeth Stride. And she was discovered on the 30th of September 1888 in which was Burner Street which we're on now is now Enrique Street um, and it was also known as Duckfield's Yard uh, where them gates led to. Um, the cause of death was a single cut incision across her neck indicating Jack the Ripper had been disturbed during the attack because 45 minutes later he committed another murder on the body of um, Catherine Eddowes who was found um, so he was disturbed there and went on to kill Captain Eddowes. I'm going to take you to that one next, a victim number four. So 45 minutes later after being disturbed, Jack the Ripper 
enters um, Mitre Square with Catherine Eddowes. And this is um, just behind the gates there, as you can see, is where the body of Catherine Eddowes, victim number four, was found. And I'm going to tell you just about what the Ripper did because he'd um, been disturbed with his previous victim. He was now angry. And I'm going to tell you what so he the did. second murder on the 30th of September, 1888. And um, Catherine Eddowes' body was discovered in a corner of Mitre Square, just as we see now, just where these gates are on the corner of Mitre Square. Her throat had been uh, severed from ear to ear. Her abdomen had been ripped open by a long, deep, jagged wound. Her intestines had been placed over her right shoulder with a section completely detached and placed between her body and her left arm. Also, her left kidney and uterus had been removed and her face disfigured with slashes and severe uh, severing of her nose and eyelids and this was because Jack the Ripper had been disturbed earlier and he was now angry and he took out all his um, all his frustration on poor Catherine Eddowes just here behind these gates just off Mitre Square so that was victim number four and then on the 9th of November the Ripper Jack the Ripper strikes again and this time he went to town on his next victim, Mary Jane Kelly. And this is the only time Jack the Ripper had um, entered the premises of somebody and murdered him. But this one was the most brutal of all. And I'm gonna take you to the fifth victim of Jack the Ripper. So we come to the fifth vi victim, um, Mary Jane Kelly. Now, as a reference point, the pub behind me, as you can see, is the Ten Bells pub. And this is where most of the prostitutes from round Whitechapel would congregate around this church. They weren't allowed to stop and look for business, so they'd keep walking around this area um, where this uh, church is. So they'd have been drinking in the Ten Bells pub, which is a reference point, but the Dorset Street is no longer here, but it used to run where that building is there, right through there. So I'm gonna tell you um, all about the, um, the Jack the Ripper's fifth victim was it his final victim? I don't know, but let's tell you a bit more about the murder. So Mary Jane Kelly discovered lying on her bed. This is the first time Jack the Ripper had murdered inside a building, and she was uh, discovered on a bed at number thirteen Miller's Court, which was off Dorset Street. As we look, Dorset Street would have been over there, and she was discovered at ten. 45 a.m. on Friday the 9th of November 1888. Now this was a pretty brutal one because he had time um, to do whatever he wanted to Mary Jane and her face had been hacked beyond recognition. Her throat uh, severed down to her spine and her abdomen almost emptied of her organs. Her uterus and kidneys and one breast had been placed beneath her head and other organs placed beside her feet. So he did actually do a really um, horrible, terrible um, murder of Mary Jane. Uh, her heart was missing and other organs placed on the bed and bedside table. And Jack the Ripper took his time on, um, this was the first, like I said, it was the first one he'd killed inside. Now, she was um, unrecognizable um, after he'd finished the battle. Was he responsible for any more Jack Ripper? Uh, more than the five that they said he was. Now, there was others uh, before and after the five, uh, including Rose Myler, uh, Alice McKenzie, the Pitchin Street Torso murder and Francis Cole, all occurred in 1889. So did Jack the Ripper, don't forget this was in November 1888, so did Jack the Ripper um, get Christmas over with? and then uh, set about another five which he, he didn't get recognition for. So, interesting, did he kill more? So this is where I'm gonna uh, end the video, a tour of um, Jack the Ripper's victims, um, past and present. And I'm ending it here, and this is Dubton Street, and I'm ending it on Dubton Street for a reason. This is Dubton Street, because this is where um, the prime suspect really 
into being Jack the Ripper. This is a street he lived on, Dubton Street. And all the murders were linked around this area. I'm not going to tell you his name because uh, Daft Monkey's video will be out and he's going to go into more detail about the guy in question who was um, the Ripper suspect. So I'm going to say thanks everyone for watching Tales Beyond the Grave. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like us, give us a thumbs up, uh, like the video, share it if you would, and um, subscribe if you've not already subscribed. We really appreciate it because it makes me uh, encourages me to get out and do uh, videos like this. I mean, I'm a bit out of my comfort zone here, coming down to London to film this. I usually film around the northwest, but hope you've enjoyed it. And it's going to be ended here on Dubton Street in the East End of London. So, I'll see you on the next one. I don't know where I'm going on the next one, but I'll see you when I get there. Bye. Thanks.